Father, I would have you look upon my creation. Is it not the fairest of all things in our garden of mythos? Indeed. But tell me, my son, are you proud of your accomplishment? Pride is a mortal emotion, Father. We are as far above it as we are above the clouds at Gurgle Mythos. And yet, I have done that to which no other can lay claim. I have crafted life from that which made the staff. Yes, I am proud. Impetuous fool! Know ye not that Mythos is a dream born of fire? Of course, Father. But... Know ye not that now, unless some method may be found to redress the balance, to fire it must return? And all our great work be undone. Not more books. <clears throat> no luck with those? No. Right then, let's see what these will tell us. I don't know what you're trying to achieve, Doctor. We know it happened and it's here in these books too. What is? The fact that Howbury's expedition vanished without a trace? The Rochester and its crew were never found? Yes. What did you expect? A snapshot of Harriet and I falling through the ice? But how much did I change the pattern? Well, how much did you? We'll never know. Not unless you feel like breaking some more of your Time Lord rules. What are you saying? Well, you never did explain about that meddling that made you six months late coming to collect me, did you? I'm... I'm sorry about that. Hmm. When I used to dream about the wonders of the universe, working in a seedy cafe at the tail end of the 20th century never sprang readily to mind. I came back, didn't I? Well, yes, but I still Still, have. you're missing the point. I'm trying to find out about this justice. What are his powers? What are his limits? Did he really take the TARDIS from us, plunge us into the most deadly peril just so that he could return it to us when we lost all hope? Truman, if I can get the measure of this... this being, this creature that hounds us... I might begin to understand his motives and get rid of him, perhaps. Why does he haunt us? What on earth's that? If I didn't know it was impossible, I'd say it sounded as though someone's walking around the console room. And trying to get in? That is impossible. Nothing on the proximity indicator. Oh, that's all right then. We're just both going mad. What now? I will. Shh, shh. It's found the door. Ah! Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, gentlemen. Uh, I beg your pardon? If I'm not mistaken, you two have the look of two fellows who are expecting someone else. Well, as a matter of fact, we were. Uh, I think perhaps introductions are in order, don't you? Oh, not necessary, not necessary at all. I know exactly who you both are. Really? Oh, yes, the wizard was quite specific. Procure for the saviour of Mythos one fool and one innocent. And here you are, 
So here I am. Now, if you'll both just sign on the dotted line, we'll be off to work. Uh, you can both write your names, I assume. I think we could just about manage that, thank you. But I'm sorry to have to tell you, we make a habit of not signing anything, don't we, Truman? That's right, Doctor. Especially when we're asked to do so by someone who, scientifically speaking, shouldn't be here at all. <laughs> What's all this? What's this? Reduced to offensive language in the presence of your betters, are we? Science, indeed. Unimaginative cuss word at best. Uh, all right, all right. Now, just who are well, you? Well, indeed. Well, I never. Suffice it to say that I am an elf, and a singularly enlightened one at that. Murgatroyd is my name, and I'll thank you to remember it. And why's that? Because when we're about the business of fighting the evil necromancer, I'd rather you didn't address me as or you. And who precisely is this necromancer? Oh, he's a bad one. A dark shadow of evil who's cast himself across our once beautiful land of mythos. A dark shadow? Aye, but it's best the wizard explains it to you. The wizard? Where would we find your wizard? Oh, just step outside your little box, Doctor. You'll find we're plump in the middle of the wizard's drawing room. Hmm, I see. Do you doubt me now? What is it, Doctor? We seem to have landed, although I don't remember it happening. Do you think this necromancer... I don't know, but it might be worth having a chat with this wizard just to make sure. The wizard is particularly well informed on all pertinent subjects. Gallifrey was one of them. How do you know about Gallifrey? Oh, well, it's not for me to talk at these things. We'll see the wizard. Take us to him. Sign here, please. Uh... Well, my elfin friend, you seem to have yourself a deal. There. And you, Truman, my lad. Hmm. Well, Doctor, shall I open the... door? Hmm. Thank you, Murgatroyd. My pleasure. Plump in the middle of the wizard's drawing room, he says. Come along, Truman. Well, don't get ratty with me. I wasn't the one who just wiggled my finger and opened the doors. Well, Murgatroyd, I suppose you'd better finish the job. Impressive bit of jiggery-pokery, isn't it? Unlike your sense of direction. Unless, of course, your friend the wizard has a uniquely bizarre taste in interior decoration. Oh, he's not my friend. He's my master. I'm his acolyte, his apprentice. At least it keeps him happy if I keep up the pretense. Senile old Wazzock. And you, of course, know exactly where we are. Ah, well, since you ask, uh, well, no, 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 not as such, not exactly, no. I see. So what you're saying is we could be in any tropical forest from Africa to Analia 7. We have no food, no protection from predators, and no idea where we're going. Well, uh, judging from the look of those mountains, I'd say we'd have to head roughly westwards to reach the wizard's town. Well, that's easy, then. We just follow our shadow. It's not quite that easy. The sun rises in the north in Mythos. And it's just as well I have a compass. <coughs> What's the matter with the dratted thing? Mythos has three magnetic poles. I hate to be predictable, but that's scientifically impossible. I must admit that is a little unusual. Well then, with an open mind and a clean slate, what do we do now? We try to avoid the necromancer's minions until we reach the wizard. Look, just who is this necromancer? Shh! Don't speak his name so loudly out here. You never know what might be listening. The necromancer is a self-styled tyrant. A dark sorcerer who has been accumulating power for many hundreds of years. He lives in the Black Castle on the slopes of the Whaley Mountains, many leagues to the north.
You summoned me, Lord. Indeed, I did, Captain. I have seen the cursed sun rise fully a score of times since first I desired the presence of the elven changeling. And still I have seen her not. Can you explain this irritating phenomenon? Your Eminence, I, uh, that is to say... Perhaps I should rephrase the question. Can you explain this irritating phenomenon without implicating yourself and your men of gross incompetence? My Lord... Mythos is large, sir. I thought not. Slave, bring me wine! I will find her captain. Wherever the elves have hidden her, I'll find her. And then... Your eminence? Yeah. Wait! My lord, may I inquire? You may search, Captain. You may dispatch my golems and you may search for the changeling. I trust you will not avail yourself of the alternative. Of course not, my lord. Then be gone from my keep! We've been travelling through this forest for hours. Oh, come on, Murgatroyd, admit it. You got lost in the TARDIS, now you're lost again. If you're thirsty, why don't you try the oranges growing on that tree? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not every day you find an orange grove in the middle of a deciduous forest and bananas rubbing shoulders with apples. Mm. Two are normally found continents apart. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do a bit. Uh, thank you, Truman. Mm. Mm. <laughs> One could grow to like it here. Actually, mythos can be a positive menace to those unprepared for it, let me tell you. Oh? There's something crashing about in the brush over there. There's something big by the sound of it. Are there any wild animals in mythos, Mother? Many, but all of them are silent. There it is! It's a golem! What? Golems are the spies of the necromancer. They do his bidding. Shaped like a man, but, but made from sticks and wattle and animated by magic. How do we stop it? More magic? I don't know any spells powerful enough to stop a creature of the Dark Lord. What are we going to do? What any sensible person does when confronted with an insurmountable opponent. Retreat! We can't escape the golem if it seeks to destroy us. We must destroy it. All right. It's only made of branches and mud. Let's see it stop this rock. Ugh. Ah! Ah! Okay, Doctor, help has got me! So, Mr. Crouch, it's not you it wants to kill. Desist, O demon of darkness, before I conjure thy destruction! So much for bluffs. Well, now we know who you want, my friend. Let's see how far you're prepared to go to get me. <laughs> I thought so. It stands to reason that a creature made of wood will always be afraid of fire. Apparently the mere threat of fire is not sufficient to warn you off. Well, I'm sorry, but... Doctor, look out! It's still after you! Time to retreat, I think! It's burning up, Doctor! If it gets hold of you... You can't run from it! I don't need to! See? It's collapsed. It's burning itself out. Be careful, Doctor. Those embers look pretty hot to me. They're cold, just like the golem was. Even magic cannot prevent the simple scientific principle of combustion. It's all right, Murgatroyd. You can stop hiding now. Murgatroyd? Ah, there you are, my dear fellow. Good of you to drop in. Do come along. Where's that tracker? Ah. Now, if I know my fantasy... The wizard's castle should be carved from blocks of ivory, correct, Murgatroyd? Well, of course it is. So? Stand by for a demonstration of the scientific method. Oh, I get it. Set the tracker to search for ivory and head for the largest registered mass. Clever. Elementary. Something wrong, my dear fellow, hmm? Something malfunctioning, is it? 
Oh, I might have guessed. Why don't you try this, hmm? A divining rod. Well, you can't deny it worked, Doctor. What a splendid castle it's brought us to, I must admit. Well done, Murgatroyd. I'll get away with your flatterers. No, really, Murgatroyd, it was brilliant. The way the stick led us here, well, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Oh, well, since you mention it, that kind of spell does take a bit of mastering. When you've quite finished accepting the accolades of non-believers... Oh, oh, yes, of course, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, um, well, I... It won't happen again. Oh, no, sir, that's quite right. I mean, it won't. No, definitely. No, 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 no. Good. Approach. Well, well, well. The fool and the innocent. Welcome to my ivory tower. Well done, Murgatroyd. It was no problem. No problem at all. Of course not, and I wouldn't have sent you, would I? Well, sure, and it's nice to receive the confidence of one's mentor occasionally. Please follow me. Refreshment and enlightenment will be provided shortly. How are we supposed to follow him when he vanishes into thin air? Like this! <laughs> How do you find the tea? Very good. Did you blend it yourself? From the very finest quality ground dragon bones. Oh no, you had to ask. A man cannot live on broken orange pico alone, Truman. Now, uh, talking of asking questions... Of course, you'll be wanting to know why you've been brought here. That had crossed our minds. Very well then. <clears throat> Let me alleviate your condition of ignorance. <clears throat> you are here at my behest to save Mythos. To fully appreciate your places in the destiny of Mythos, it is necessary to understand some of our world's history. This history, which I'm about to relate to you, takes the form of a legend. The legend of the Elfstaff. The legend is conventional enough in its conception. Like most stories of its kind, it begins when the world was young. Not the world as we know it today. Oh no. This world was a boiling, molten place. It bled rock and steam as if it were one vast open wound. <coughs> the sky was yellow, the sun white. The only kind of animals that could live in this inferno were huge reptilian creatures whose skin was thick enough to protect them from the violent, deadly world which was their home. No one really knows why the gods chose to place life on this ravaged world. Some of the least conventional philosophers, as well as one or two of the warlocks, believed that our home was made from the fires of hell as a punishment for the blasphemy of the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> but whatever the reason, even the gods needed a fulcrum to help them rebalance the world. Just like your average human villager would need a lever to right a broken cart. They needed a tool, so they created the staff. Now it is called the Elf Staff although there were no elves in the world at that time. So the gods forged a gleaming silver staff from the stuff of the earth, and at one end was placed a jet crosspiece, giving it the appearance of a sword twice the height of a man. They tempered the device in molten rock and cooled it in the icy depths beyond our world. Then they drove it deep into the ground as if they were lancing a boil. Then, according to legend, all the poisonous stuff leaked away, and the world was changed into grass, and trees, and clean air, and cool, fresh water, and Mythos was born. Of course, the only things that lived in it were the remnants of the huge reptiles which had flourished in the previous inferno. Most of these great animals died from the cold, but many came to live in the warm places, on the slopes of the fire mountains, many leagues to the south. I think they may have felt at home there because it was hotter, and because molten rock occasionally bubbled out of the earth for them to bathe in. When the gods saw what a beautiful place they'd made, they decided to liven it up a bit. After all, even the most beautiful place in the universe can be boring if nothing ever happens there. <laughs> so, they each took turns to craft living creatures from the stuff of the earth. Just as earlier, they'd made the staff. But of course, not quite so magical or powerful. First of all, they made birds and fish and insects to help promote a balanced ecology. Then they became more ambitious, and so were born the dwarves of the hills, the mermen of the sea. And each race was given a specific gift. 
The dwarves, for instance, developed great mining and forging skills, while the mermen had the ability to live and breathe beneath the water as well as above it. Now, one god, not the most powerful nor the least, whose name has never been recorded, or if it has, it's been long forgotten, decided that this particular form of life should be superior to all the others. So, without the consent or knowledge of his peers, he began to experiment in secret. At first, his experiments were horrendous mistakes. This is how the basilisk, the medusa, the harpies, and all the other evil, magical creatures came into being. But as he learned more and more of the nature of life, his experiments became more successful. The final inspiration came when he created a life form from the same material of which the staff had originally been made. However, because his conclusions were only partially drawn, this form of life, too, was a partial failure. It walked upright on two legs, had hands, a brain, the capacity to learn and build, but it also had the negative attributes of hatred and fear, also of jealousy, selfishness and greed. He had made man. However, not put off by this imperfect creation, the god persevered with his experiments, and when he next created life, he got exactly what he wanted. He called them elves, and they were mankind without faults or fears. A noble, mature race, who, because they were crafted from the same material as the staff, had a limited ability to use it. Now, at last, the god was satisfied and proudly revealed his creations to his peers. But then he suffered a great shock. So enraptured by his own work had he been that he had failed to remember how the staff had functioned. Like all things, the staff needed a source of energy from which to periodically renew the world as it had become. And the energy came from that earth stuff of which it was made. Now nearly all that earth stuff had been used to make mankind and the elves. There was not enough left to fuel the staff in its efforts to maintain the world as the paradise the gods had intended it to be. Mythos was a dream, born of fire. Now it began to revert to a molten puddle of elements in which no life could live. Guilt-stricken at his terrible mistake, the god immediately banished himself from paradise forever. The other gods were forced to try and correct his work. <coughs> They taught the cleverest elves to use the staff whenever the world was threatened by the resurgence of that earlier part of itself, allowing that it should draw its energy from the elven user himself. So the secret was passed down from generation to generation of elves. Such is the greatness of their bestowed power. Each one of the changelings, as they became known, was hidden away, living a life of secrecy, carefully guarding the knowledge of their sole purpose in life. Once every thousand seasons or so, the changeling is brought forth and charges the staff with the healing power. And in this manner, mythos is maintained. This is the legend of the elf staff. Now it has been stolen from the elves by the evil necromancer, who no doubt would see our world destroyed were we not to worship him as our god. <coughs> Which is very unfortunate because the time for its next use draws very close indeed. It is for this reason that I have summoned you both to this place. The elf staff must be wrested from the necromancer and placed in the hands of the changeling so that Mythos might once again be renewed. It is long since one of your kind has been seen within these dark walls. How came you here, I wonder? You are lost. How sad. Where are you from? The village. You belong to my ex-slave, Jeremiah. Well, now you belong to me. Him out of the guns! Are you or are you not responsible for fortress security? Uh, I am, Lord. Then explain if you can. 
How came here this? A cat, Lord. Uh, I, uh, I cannot, Lord. Presumably it found a way in. Not known to your men. I... Captain, I have the elf staff of legend. Soon I shall have the one elf capable of utilising it. I employ you to keep all three of us from harm. Do you have a sergeant, Captain? One you can rely on. One whom you can trust. Yes, Lord. Good. Promote him to Captain in your place and then return here. Yes, Lord. When he returns, you'll kill him, of course. You'll try to escape. I know it. I sensed it in his heart as surely as I read it in his eyes. But he must be made an example of. Where a cat can enter, so can a serpent. He is an accomplished soldier, Lord. What if he escapes? None can escape the wolf riders, Sarkin. None so long as I lead them, Lord. It will be good sport for your knights, Sarkin. And good practice. A new force of light was seen in the eastern lands today. It destroyed one of my golem spies. Has this force been summoned by the wizard? I do not know. But that does not matter since I shall be rid of him by tomorrow noon. Without his guidance, the light will fail and the world will be plunged into darkness. Then you, Sarkin, shall procure for me the elven changeling, and Mythos will be mine. What of the cat, Lord? What of the cat, Sarkin? <laughs> going to have a decent night's sleep. That fight with the golem really took it out of me. At least you didn't get chucked into a thorn tree. And I suppose you want us to go and find a weapon capable of defeating the necromancer today. That's why we're hurrying through breakfast. I'm tired. Surely it could wait till daybreak. Know you nothing of things magical. Know you not that the one weapon capable of defeating the black sorcerer can only be found at first light, and then only at a place many leagues from here. Well, the breakfast was pretty magical. Got any more? Ah! Oh. beg your pardon? The weapon you must procure is named Lyasa. It's got a name. Yes, she does. Now, here's the transportation spell and the coil of stuck rope. You must leave at once. But I don't understand. Aren't you coming? Your ability to consume vast quantities of food while simultaneously ignoring important conversations does nothing to alleviate my bad temper. <coughs> Suppose I'd been as irresponsible at your age, hmm? Where would we be now, eh? Well, I know where I'd be, safe in the TARDIS, instead of... Come on! Instead of sitting here being trapped in... Where did he go? What are we doing back in the forest? Hunting for a weapon named Lyasa, one presumes. <laughs> Murgatroyd, stop gloating. Would you care to explain now? Please get on with it. I'm getting cold. What is this Lyasa we have to catch? <laughs> well, no, I think you'll be finding that her weapon, in so much as an it, as a who, she's a unicorn. She only appears here in this glade for the span of sunrise, and she's insubstantial, so catching her will not be easy. Oh, terrific. And how exactly do you propose we do that? <laughs> ah! Murgatroyd? <laughs> Why, with an innocent, of course. You! Me! Oh. Oh, I see. The innocent and the fool. But if I'm the innocent, then that makes the doctor... It just... Get on with it, Truman. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. It is, is it? Oops! Here's the rope, Truman. Catch! What am I supposed to do with this? But isn't it obvious? Just tell him what to do with the rope. Murgatroyd! 
Get the rope around her neck. Once bound to our plane by the nose, she won't be able to escape. Watch out! Oh, that horn looked extremely solid to me. Of course it is! Well, you said we couldn't touch her! I never said she couldn't touch us! Come on, Doctor, let's give the lad some room. I think he's gonna need it. Oh, no, wait a minute, Doctor, you can't leave me here! Yeah, let it be said, I left a man to his desk. Uh, Doctor, I don't think that, that's a very good idea! Oh, Magatroid, help! The rope boy, use the rope! What? Uh, uh, stop! For heaven's sake, stop! He will be all oh. right, won't he, Murgatroyd? I expect so. Oh! Oh! Doctor! Uh, Doctor, help! I can't let go of the road! She, she, she won't stop! Oh! No! Watch out for those thorn bushes! Oh! That. I think she likes them, don't you, Doctor? Well, she oh. hasn't impaled him yet, if that's what you mean. Oh! Ow! Ah! God, stop! You're gonna kill me! Stop! Please! Stop! All you had to do was ask politely. I don't believe it. Oh, don't they make a lovely couple? You wait until I get my hands on you, I'll... No, but... you won't, Truman, dear. Now you've tamed me, I expect you to conduct yourself in a manner befitting a gentleman. I am a lady, after all. Oh, don't you start. You're not a lady. Truman, just a think what you're saying before you say what you're thinking. You're right, I suppose. I'm sorry, Elias. That's quite all right, dear. The chase was quite merry, wasn't it? I must confess, I've been caught for centuries. One forgets how fulfilling it is. Of course, yes. So what do we do now, Murgatroyd? Go back to the ivory tower? In our absence, the wizard will have been preparing a spell to transport us to the secret location of the elven changeling. And then once we have retrieved the staff from the necromancer, she may use it in its rightful manner. She? The changeling's a woman? Ah, it's always been that the changeling is a woman. Although to your eyes, she will appear to be naught but a child. So we're on an adventure then? Yes. Well... If there's likely to be some goring involved, I suppose we'd better get a move on. Get your friends on my back, Truman. I'll steer. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't know why, but I get the feeling time may be of the essence. Uh, Liasa, do you think you could manage to go a bit faster? Well, only if Truman says. Why can't you do whatever the doctor says as well? Because I don't take orders from a fool. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think we'd all better get into hiding. Quickly. What on earth? Liasa, get under the trees, quickly. I can't see. What are they? The necromancer's dragon brood. They're heading for the ivory town. The wizard. You have to get back there. Wait, don't be stupid. There's hundreds of them. What can you do? Uh, I don't know. I'll think of something. There's nothing you can do. But the nothing. wizard. They'll kill him. Burn him. We have to do something. Wait. They're passing. Doctor, shh. Murgatroyd. They're going to kill him. from the slopes of the Fire Mountains. The information I seek, Sarkin! Do they have it? Did the old fool know the hidden whereabouts of the Elven Changeling? <clears throat> the wizard must have taken fright and fled, but he left behind a map showing the Changeling's whereabouts. 
Rats. Prepare the Wolf Rider, Sarkin. You shall ride at dusk. The old fool. I told him. I warned him. I said this would happen. He would insist on meddling. Stupid fool. Stupid old fool. Doctor. Leave him. You thought you knew it all. But you knew nothing. Now look at it. All your dreams reduced to ashes along with our home. I've been scouting the glade. Dragon spores are everywhere. And there are things moving in the forest. Watching to make sure there are no survivors. We're here. Murgatroyd. Leave me a morning, Morton. There's no time for that. We're surrounded by golems. They're in the woods, and they want to kill us. We're in trouble, then. What's the world coming to? All is death and woe, and no time even for sorrow. Well, Doctor, what is it you want? I need to know how to get past the golems. Uh, was there a secret passage leading from the tower deeper into the forest? Well, of course there was. No self-respecting wizard to design his tower without hidden exits. It'd be more than his job's worth. Excellent! We'll use it to get past the golems. Where's the entrance? Beneath that large block of ivory. I can see movement all along the forest's edge, Doctor. Everybody grab hold of the edge. Heave! <coughs> it's not moving! Pull harder! It's no good, it's not moving. Then try pushing it. Here, let me have. Good guess. Come on, everyone. We only have to tip it a little more and its weight will work for us instead of against us. We've done something. It won't move anymore. It's too late. They're here. Quickly, friends. Into the passage. But the block. I will support it. Hurry. All right, Liesa. Everyone, down the hall. Liesa, what about you? Get inside, Truman. Even I cannot sustain this weight forever. Truman, hurry up. I'm staying with Liesa. Truman! Hold it the wizard wanted you in this fight for a reason, yes. I'm not about to let you lose this round to a bunch of animated fire. Then mount up, dear Truman, and we shall show these golems our heels. Truman! Liasa! Oh, it's not good. That block's immovable. What are we going to do now? I don't know. In a matter of hours, the necromancer will know where the change gets hidden. While we're still blundering about in the dark, literally. I wonder if... Everlasting matches. Little invention of mine. Often find they come in useful in dark situations. We appear to be in some sort of underground grotto. See how the columns of rock sparkle? That means there's silica embedded in the surface. Yes, but that's all very well, Doctor. But a new war illuminates a course of action and does a firefly like the moon. Mm, this is true. Look, come on. This place has to lead somewhere. We can walk and think at the same time. No. Common sense says the wizard must have got his information from somewhere. So, if we could somehow trace his line of thought... <laughs> what on earth?! They're all around us. Take the rope from around my neck. Please, Truman. There. Now you will know what it is like to outrun the wind. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh me! Right over their heads! What is it? Why have you stopped? A basilisk. Oh, that thing asleep on the grass. That's just a harmless little lizard. Be quiet. The very gaze of that harmless little lizard is instantly lethal to all living things. I see. If it should awake, the yes, it's about us. It's waking up. Wolf riders are prepared, my lord. You have but to name a destination. 
and we will rise soon, my friend. Soon. Welcome, O oh Queen of the Dragon Brood. There is no welcome so warm as my mountain lord necromancer. So make no pretense. Do you have the information I seek? I do. Then impart it to me, and the whole world shall burn as doth your hope. I demand the location of the elven changeling. Give it to me! Now! it turns to stare after us. I don't think it will. It seems to be rather heavily involved with that horde of golems. Leaving us free to escape. Yes, but to where? The wizard is dead. The necromancer must know the location of the elven changeling. We don't know anything. Ah, but I know something. Or rather, I know someone. Thalira, queen of the fairies. She'll help us? For a price. What do you mean? The little people are the most powerful magic folk there are. Their strength lies in their family, and while they live, none may coerce them. However, they are a totally materialistic folk. If you spite them, you will die horribly. If you solicit their help, you must provide a favor in return, often a hugely disproportionate one. Oh, great. How are we supposed to find them? I had to ask. What is that thing? There's nothing to worry about, Doctor. Nothing to worry about? It's bigger than an emetoid. It's the Worm Ouroboros. The... The Worm Ouroboros? The worm that swallows its own tail? Well, I can't see its tail, Murgatroyd. All I can see is its mouth. And that's heading straight for us. <laughs> it's swallowed us. Talk about Jonah and the whale. What are we going to do now? 
Murgatroyd. Murgatroyd? We must keep walking, Doctor. Our days on Mythos are to an end. We travel now towards a new life. Travel towards a world. Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me we're dead? Only with reference to Mythos. I don't understand. To that fair land, we will never return. Hasn't even begun the process of digestion yet. The worm Ouroboros is an endless circle that joins all places and all times. When it comes for you, your time and your place has ended. Then it swallows you and you must move on. Murgatroyd, you're in shock. Come on, snap out of it. Here, here. sniff this. <coughs> What manner of hell brew? Ammonia used to great effect on swooning ladies in the early half of the 19th century on Earth. Stings, doesn't it? It'll keep you awake, though. I'd thank you to keep your bottle of demons away from me, fair nostrils, pothead. Welcome back, Murgatroyd. Now then, perhaps you'd care to explain what's so special about a worm you can walk through, and more importantly, how we're going to get out of it. Sake. Recall the Golem Horde to help me guard the Elstar while you are gone. They are returning, Lord. They report four survivors from the attack upon the wizard's ivory tower. Two men, an elf, and... <coughs> a unicorn. So, perhaps the old man was not so foolish as I had supposed. But it is of no importance. By the time the unicorn reaches me, I shall possess both the staff and the changeling, and no power in Mythos shall be able to thwart my purpose. Ride, Sarkin, ride to a new world! from our royal repose. We grant you permission to speak. Two travelers on a quest, your majesty. Liasa, unicorn, and Truman Crouch, a man. A true man? One of the big people? Hmm. Perhaps we can come to some arrangement. What is your request? Oh, Queen, we seek the elven changeling, hidden from all knowledge to protect her from the necromancer. If you can tell us how we may reach her, and ensure her safety against the Dark Lord, we will consider fulfilling any reasonable request made of us. Oh, steady on. We don't know what she'll ask. It matters not. For Mythos, we must concede whatever she wishes, though it rends my pride to do so. We have considered. The information you seek will be provided. After you, true man, have vanquished the scourge of our fairy maidens, for which they may reward you later, in their own fashion. What must I do? Every day at noon, a wyvern comes to pester our community, and in particular our maidens, you must vanquish this monster, and you must do it without any magical assistance in order to prove your own merit. Yes. No magical assistance, Truman. That means I cannot help you. You must fight the two-legged dragon alone. Truman. Should you fall in battle, know this. I shall avenge you. Thanks. Queen Thalera, I'm ready. Take them to the place of combat. So what you're saying is, if we walk deep enough inside, we'll find ourselves outside again, but in a different world. Yes, Doctor, that's right. Fascinating. A Mobius band. Or a Klein bottle. But alive? Existing through more than just three spatial dimensions. Uh, what is a Mobius band? What? Oh, uh, here, I'll show you. Take that piece of parchment the wizard gave you, 
and tear it into a long strip, about an inch wide. That's right. Then join the ends to form a ring. Now, how many sides does the paper have? Two, of course. Inside and outside. Correct. Now then, separate the ends, give one a half twist and rejoin them together. Now, how many sides does it have? Do you think I'm stupid or something? The paper has two sides, same as it always had. Think again. Put your finger on the rim and follow the path of the paper like this. Well, I'll be a beetle pie. It's only got one side, which is both inside and outside. They're connected. It's magic. No, Murgatroyd. Science. A flat, two-sided strip of paper, when joined together in the correct way, can possess only one physical surface. Now, suppose we were able to use a roll of paper, a tube instead of a flat strip. Suppose we could connect the ends together in a similar fashion. The inside will become the outside just like before. That's what Earth scientists call a Klein bottle, a tube whose inner surface becomes its outer surface. And that's what your worm Ouroboros is. A living, breathing Klein bottle. One that connects all the worlds of the universe together, fantastic and mundane. So to get out, all we have to do is walk through. Do we pop out like corks from a jar of mead, except... Aye, and there's the rub. We'd still have no idea of where we'd be. We will leave you now to your destiny, true man. In but one hour, we shall return. Though whether it be to celebrate your victory or mourn your passing, only the gods may decide. Oh, well. Thanks for being so encouraging. How does she do that? Oh, uh, oh dear. <clears throat> Wyvern! Great. Now I've got its attention. What the hell am I supposed to do with it? Um, <clears throat> I have come here to challenge you. Ah! Well, this is ridiculous. It's obvious I can't win. Yet if I don't, Mythos will fall. I don't know what Valera will do to Lyasa. <laughs> hey! Hey! Hey, hang on! If Thalira is as powerful as Lyasa seems to think, why hasn't she banished you from her kingdom already? No, 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 wait, please. Let's not fight for a minute. There's something wrong here. Look, can't you talk or something? Hmm? All the other animals... Creatures around here seem to be able to. All right! All right! Don't get your wings in a flap just because you can't talk. You mean... you can talk? But not now. Why not? Has someone hurt you? Who? Can I help? Wings? You hurt yourself. No. Who else has wings? Valera! Valera did this to you? Why? It's no good. No, I can't understand you. I, I want to help, but I can't. True man, you have failed in your task. The monster is not dead. Very well, we shall destroy it ourselves. No, 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 wait, Thalira, please, wait. This wyvern isn't a monster. It can't talk, but it can communicate. We've been getting on like a house on fire, haven't we? I don't think it will be necessary to kill him to rid your community of the menace he represents. And who precisely are you to contradict our royal person? I say destroy the animal now. No! Why do we not listen to Truman, O oh Queen? There is much violence and mistrust in Mythos of late. It is a fire I would not have fueled by an argument of mine. By your own admission, the Wyvern has killed no one yet. 
I wonder what the Wyvern would say if he could speak the mirror. Why don't you give him back his voice and let's find out? I... No. Then kill him now. Go on. I... Why don't you kill him now? I like this game, Doctor. It's not as though we've got a great choice of subject matter. I don't know about that, Doctor. I spy with my little eye something beginning with O. Ouroboros. Outside, Doctor. Outside. You know, I do believe you're right. Come on. Let's find out where we are so we can get back to where we were. It's no good. I cannot change him back. I can make him speak, but I can never change him back while the necromancer has the elf staff. My love. No, I... His voice, Thalira. Let him speak. I thank you, friend true man. We understood again after so long. It is a good thing, I think. My pleasure. What's your name? When Thalira forced me into this body, I took the name Wyvern. So shall you know me until I return to my proper form. Another changeling. And an involuntary one, I suspect. The spell which transformed me was concocted by Queen Thalira when, long ago, I refused to become a lover. Learning that I loved another, she flew into a rage of jealousy and swore that if she could not have me, no fairy lass ever would. <laughs> Hence my modified form and lack of speech. And that was why you hung around. Hoping against hope to spot my true love, yet despairing, for my new form would surely terrify her even as she beheld me. I could not even tell her what had happened, for I could only produce great columns of fire which would surely have burned her had I attempted to communicate. For five long years, I have lurked and observed and terrified my kinfolk for, as a monster, that is my nature now. Ever since she has remained faithful to my memory, though what she fears became of her true love, I cannot say. But now, Thanks to your compassion and persuasiveness, my redemption is nearing. If you will but let me kill the Lyra, her spell will be broken, and I may rejoin my love. If he kills me, you will never find the information you seek. Mythos will fall to the necromancer. You... Must make Wyvern promise to spare my life if I tell you where the changeling is. Wyvern. I know what you ask. Oh, my love. That I must balance our future against the survival of our world. What a choice to you lay upon these leathery shoulders, oh queen. Promise! Or we all die. 
it is so. Now, tell them what you must to retire from my sight, lest I be tempted to boil you yet. Well, Thalera, where is the changeling hidden? And how do we find her? This spell will take you to within a league of her present location. After that, it is up to you to find her. Oh, and I suppose we should just take everything you say as gospel, right? I mean, you're so obviously trustworthy that I can't imagine you tricking us. Can you, Leosa? As a matter of fact... I don't like it, Thalera. I don't like it at all. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. I want to guarantee that this spell isn't going to drop us in the middle of the ocean or out in space somewhere. A personal guarantee. Something Lyasa can verify. You overstep yourself! I think not. Now, where are we going? A far distant land, known only to us in legend. America. Hey, buddy, why don't you keep your stupid kid on the sidewalk? Or better still, in the kindergarten. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, while you're at it, why don't you join him? Goddamn jaywalkers. Doctor, where are we? Times Square of a Saturday evening, I believe. I don't like it here. It's loud. And smelling. Hello there, pretty. <laughs> I love the ears. Can I bite them? Um, uh, uh, no, thank you. We're looking for someone. For why'd you go and say that, Doctor? I was just starting to get interested. Here, lady, do you want to bite me ears? I beg your pardon? I said, do you want to bite... Is this child with you? Uh, y yes, I I'm... Uh, then oh, keep oh. him under better control. <sighs> Sorry, we're from England, you see. And, uh... Officer? Yes, ma'am. There is a problem. Well, there certainly is. This dubious man and his disgusting offspring have assaulted me with lewd suggestions. You wish to press charges, ma'am? Well, I certainly wish to protest in the strongest manner. Ma'am, if you don't wish to press charges, then I'll pay you. In all the units in vicinity, respond to a 409 in progress. Madison and Knight. Clock control, responding to 409. Well, such rudeness. What now? Liasa, hello! Who's your new friend? He's called Wyvern. We're here to find the changeling. The crowd seems to like us, don't they? Hey, is that horn real? What about the dragon that's really spit fire? Uh, please, please, stand well back. We need room to bring the cameras through. Make way, please. Liasa, we need to get out of here. Uh, yes, ma'am, the hair is very realistic, I agree. No, uh, please don't touch the dragon like that. The makeup people will hate you forever if the scales start to fall off. Thank you so much. <laughs> All aboard. Right, where are we going? Remember the police message? 09 is the code for a kidnapping in progress. The prefix 4 means a child is involved. It's changing. It could be, Truman, could be. Everyone ready? Then let's go, Liasa! Hey, get your hands off me, you dirty pervert! We're not in the Middle Ages now, you know. It's for the life of molesting a kid these days. Let's just stop pretending, <laughs> shall we, my dear? It will be so much easier. Did you have to kill that cop? <clears throat> His neck was weaker than I expected. Look, it will be so much easier if you just, just let me let go. Me go. Uh, 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 uh. And why should I do that? <laughs> you know as well as I do, the magic doesn't work here. That's why the elves hid you here when my master stole the staff. He has the staff? And now, I have someone to use it for him. You might as well let her go now. You're outnumbered. I think history may prove you wrong. Look, 
coming out of those deserted buildings. The Wolf Riders. We've had our chips for sure now. Not so long as I can start fire without. By the gods. I'll show these carrion the real reason natural selection gifted my species with a horn. <laughs> from this place. Doctor! Doctor, over there! He's going to get away! I see Trim and I see, but we can't reach them. There are too many dead wolves and riders in the way. Ah. Oh, yes? They're vanishing as fast as they die. I don't believe it. That can be exactly it. This world is incapable of acknowledging that magical creatures exist. So as soon as the binding force in them is released with their deaths, they simply fade away. Red King philosophy. We're all in someone else's dream. Uh, exactly. And when the dreamer awakes... What? An extra-dimensional gateway. When it's fully materialised, it will be a portal through which they can escape back to Mythos. Then why don't they just go? Because it's highly dangerous until materialisation is complete. Which also gives us a chance of rescuing the child. In America? Yeah, easy when it's operated from the other side. You know, they have magic here in America too, Sarkin. <clears throat> oh? And what is the name of this powerful spell with which you obviously hope to save your worthless neck? It's called Mace. <laughs> yeah! What have you done? See you around, sucker. Remain where you are and place your hands in the air. Any attempt to resist arrest will be treated with the utmost severity. Lyasa, Murgatroyd, Wyvern! Get through the gate, fast! You too, Truman. Get the child. All right, Doctor. Hey, man. Up against the squad car and spread them. Ooh. Waiter! You're making a big mistake, officer. You see, if I don't get back to Mythos with the dragon and the unicorn, the necromancer will kidnap the changeling and the world will come to... Uh, an end. Okay, Mr. Spielberg. I get it. But get this. City Ordinance 109, subsection 3, states quite clearly that you need state permission to film in this area. Unless you can produce written documentation to that effect, I'm going to take great pleasure in running you in. Um, Think it over. Uh, hey, hey! Come on, let's, let's can, can the effects, effects now, huh? Oh, oh tell, tell me, me how, how, man. I ain't no technician. Can't even work out where the projector is. Oh, um, allow me to show you. It's back projection, you see. So, if I go through this glowing archway... Goodbye! Uh, you want to call this one in? You call it in, huh? Better than a taxi ride across the east side. Later, <laughs> later. Is everyone all right? I'm fine. <laughs> I must slip out, you know. Truman, my debt to you has been repaid. I must now return to seek out my love. I wish you all well on your quest, but my destiny lies elsewhere. Farewell. Back to business. We've materialized far too close to the necromancer's stronghold for comfort. Will he suspect our presence here, do you think? I'm not sure. It all depends upon how affected he'll be by Sarkin's rather premature return. Oh, he won't learn very much from Sarkin. I pushed him through the gate before it was fully functional. Yes, I saw. It was very brave. Truman, please don't patronize me. I'm a lot older than you. 
I knew exactly what I was doing. Now, uh, would it be possible for us to all put some distance between us and the necromancer? I think that would be a very good idea. Truman, look, I'm sorry I snapped at you. Oh, that's all right. It must be a strain trying to be two people at once, especially if one doesn't really exist. Yeah, you guessed it. Hmm. Well, look, do you mind if we start all over again? I'm Truman. How do you do? Alison, hiya. Uh, this is the doctor. This is Murgat Troy. Oh, I know him. We're siblings, to my eternal embarrassment. <laughs> Why, my dear Alf, you've gone bright red. Oh, he's always doing that. Especially when the girls at spell school put a spell on his... Uh, sure, and it's a delight to see you again, too. Uh, for a while there, I was frightened you might have gone and grown up without me. Would I? Well, I can see we've all got some catching up to do. And I don't know about anyone else, but I'm parched. Do you think your friends, the fairies, might brew up some tea for, for returning here? Oh, it's hardly our friends, Doctor. I didn't waste a perfectly good spell getting you back from America just to have you go wasting time drinking tea. Who said that? It's a basilisk. Look away. Wait. It was the basilisk who was talking. That's no basilisk. I know that voice anywhere. It's just as well my survival didn't depend on your quick thinking, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry. sorry. Rhetorical question. Sometimes I forget how literal-minded youngsters are today. No, don't come too close just yet. <sighs> Getting a new body under control always takes us a day or two. Not quite settled in yet. I don't understand. We found the ivory tower ruined. Yes, my fault. Getting old, you know. It's taken me an eon, but I'm getting there at last. Won't be long for this world now. Another few centuries, then I'll just be a memory. Fit for the wind to fling at the trees. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. The necromancer sent his dragon brood to raise the tower and elicit from me the ch... Uh, please excuse me, your whereabouts, my dear Alison. You told them where I was? Seems my stupid brother got himself an ab mentor. <clears throat> have a care, sister. I might wash your mouth out with a soapstone. You'd have to wash the dirt out of your mind first. <clears throat> if I may be permitted to apologize, inadvertently I'm responsible for revealing your whereabouts. With the help of my familiar, the worm Ouroboros, I prepared a map by which the doctor's retinue was to have found you. On it were charted all the locations where it's possible to conjure up a magic gateway between our worlds. Oh, yeah. I lifted that from Sarkin just before I hit him with the mace. Uh, could you give me that map, please, Alison? Sure. And that aerosol mace, did you say? Yeah. Th then, when the dragons attacked my tower, I foolishly panicked and fled, leaving the map for them to find. But how did you escape? After I managed to animate the nearest living creature, my bad luck, it happened to be a basilisk, but with the dragon's attack, I wasn't prepared to be too fussy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I tried to stop Lyasa and Truman, but they thought I just wanted to kill them, so I followed them to the fairy encampment. Just in time to watch Thalira send them to America via the gate. I hung around for a while, observing that the Queen was most angry about something. Something to do with the women, I think. Some of her people came upon her, and she raged and swore at them in her anger. Then, then she left, swearing a mighty vengeance on the ones who had toppled the throne. My love. So, she went to solicit the necromancer, and his dragon brood destroyed the I shall kill her, my love. I swear I shall kill her. It was you, wasn't it? Time for its next use draws near. Aye. Madam, you are correct. 
Allison, do you wish to be party to this council? Yeah, I want to take that necromancer sucker out. I sometimes ponder the elves' wisdom in disguising you as an American. I think I might have a plan. What a surprise. Can you animate a golem for me? You need but supply the wood. Look up there! It's Wyvern. He must have. I sought out my love and found her. We... we know. Thalira has much to answer for. Have you slept well, Sarkin? <clears throat> you know I did not, Lord. I kept company with the dying. I nearly joined them. All my wolf riders dispatched. You their only survivor. And the changeling in the hands of the elf's company. It is a sore day for us. A sore day indeed. Sarkin, summon the dragon brood. Morning is come and we must prepare for the final battle. Perhaps I shall destroy that which I would rule, even though I do not wish it. Now you, Murgatroyd, Truman, Liasa, and Alice, the wizard has summoned the Worm Ouroboros to transport you to America. What's your plan, Doctor? Chancy. It all depends on the necromancer's strength of character. A frontal assault on his fortress is completely out of the question. According to the wizard, the building and its immediate surrounds are heavily fortified with defense spells. Instead, we've got to use guile. The Doctor has asked me to animate a golem of Allison. This he will take to the necromancer's fortress. Its likeness should be close enough to fool the Dark Sorcerer into thinking it's the real girl. Then, before his eyes, you, Wyvern, will burn the golem. Hopefully, the Necromancer will be so enraged by the seemingly senseless destruction of his plans that we can lure him through the Dimensional Gate, which, according to this map, should be passing between us and him at exactly midday. Oh, I get it. In our world, his magic will be useless, so Lyasa and I should have no trouble finishing him off. Wrong. You will have nothing to do with it. You will be there simply to guard Allison until we have the elf staff. Then we'll bring her back here so that she may use the staff to close the gate, leaving the necromancer hopelessly trapped in America. After that, the elf staff may be used as it was designed, free of the threat of covert violence. Well, as plans go, doesn't it leave a lot to chance? <laughs> As plans go, it's the best we have. The worm will arrive within the hour. When it arrives, you must walk immediately into its mouth. But be not afraid. It will not harm you. What will you be doing all this time? The wizard, Wyvern, and I will take the golem Allison to the necromancer's fortress. The wizard will serve as a shield against the dark sorcerer's personal magic. Wyvern will be there to burn the golem. I shall blunt the necromancer's mind to make him angry and susceptible to our plan. Let us take our leave. It's time to depart. The Dragon Queen is summoned, Lord. Her retinue will arrive in less than an hour. Gollum sentries have reported the Elven Company to be camped not far from the fortress. They have the Changeling with them. You know, Sarkin, I weary of battle. I would quit the fight were it in my nature to do so. Lord, what do you say? The staff is in our possession. They are obviously bringing the changeling here for a reason. Yes, for a reason. But for what reason? We must take her, Sarkin. When they come within range, send more golems to fetch her. And the others? They are of no matter. Let them die. My spell can only carry us within half a league of the fortress. 
From here it's perhaps half an hour's march for a fit man. We're cutting it fine if you want to be there before midday, Doctor. Yeah, I know, I know. We'll just have to walk faster, that's all. Our golem forestores near the elf's retinue, Lord. Then let them attack, Sarkin. Let them attack! You're right. By the way, congratulations on your golem. It's so lifelike, I just found myself reassuring it. Thank you, Doctor. It will benefit no one unless we get to the fortress in one piece. The golems are between us and it. If only we could fly over their heads. Ah, stupid, stupid, of course we can. If you know a good levitation spell. There is a wyvern with the elves' company, Lord. It is destroying a large number of the Golem. Dispatch the Dragon Brood to assist my Golem force. I will have a victory! Watch it, Wither, you nearly fried me! That is not I, Doctor. The levitation spell is prepared. Too late. Here come the dragons. I fear we're trapped. Oh, no, we're not. Quick change of plan, I think. Can you levitate the golems into the path of the dragons? <laughs> I certainly can. Arise. Converge. Impede. It's working. Look, the golems are intercepting all the fireballs. Yes, 
But there are only so many golems. When the last is burnt, we'll be helpless. Obviously, a passive defense is useless. What we need is a good offense. You must think. Here it is. The worm. Murgatroyd, you're going to have to guide us through. All right, all right. As if one death week isn't enough. Come on, Alison. Hang on, I'll be right there. Alison, come on! Where have you got to? Ah! Sorry, Truman. The doctor wanted a last-minute chat. Can you believe it? Yes. Now, come on into the worm. Follow Murgatron. Are they dead yet, Sarkin? No, Lord. Their leader proffers terms of surrender. Very well. Have the dragons approach. Then. When in a range, they are to kill all, except the girl. <laughs> but Lord, that is not... Uh... Honorable Sarkin. <laughs> you forget your place. Now fetch me the changeling. They stopped firing. They're coming closer. You think they'll fall for it, Doctor? They might. I don't like this. Are they in range yet? Nearly, yes. Wait till you can reach them all. I can reach them all now. Wait. Give the changeling to us, and we shall spare your lives. Then take her. Here they come, Doctor. Now! Ah! All those basilisk guys. Now come on, let's get to the fortress. by the loss of his troops. Hello? Are you coming out to play? Or will I have to winkle you out? I would know this oath that I might kill him. Oh, Lord. I see no elf or wizard at your side, hero of mythos. Tell me your name that I might dispatch you now and have done with the onerous task. Me, Lord? I am but a fool placed here for your amusement, here with my love and my trusty pets, the dumb dragon and the beastly basilisk. We're going to play games all day, all day, lack a dee, -dee. Won't you come out to play? I shall come to you when it pleases me, fool! And you shall know when I do, for you shall crawl upon the ground like a worm until I decide to kill you. And then you shall die. Ooh. Worm, is it, my lord? Shall I crawl for you now, my lord, and eat dirt? Fool, I shall take the changeling now. Summon fire! Summon rain! How am I doing? Good. You keep calling the spells, I'll keep whispering them. What manner of magic can a fool perform? Do not toy with me, fool. Let us instead strike a bargain. What would you have for the changeling? Why, uh, 
pretty flower for my love. A rose. Done! <laughs> ah, but it has thorns to prick me. Of course it does. Fool! It's a rose! But it hurts me! Then why ask for it? Uh, I shall have a uh, pastry for my love. <laughs> or a suit of clothes. <laughs> Finer ones. <laughs> I'll try a pony. You try my patience! It's working, my dear doctor. He's losing control. How much time do we have left? A few minutes yet. Hmm. Look. Can I offer you jewels? Can I move it? Power! What do you want? I would have a queen for my love. Sarkin, fetch Thalera from the dungeons. Yeah, once, Lord. A queen will arrive shortly for your pleasure, fool. Sir, fool. What? Call me Sir, fool. I am a knight. I must have a queen for my love. Here she is, Lord. Your friends are waiting, my dear. They are no friends of mine. Nevertheless, you will serve them. Fool! Sir! Fool! Sir! Fool! Well, is our bargain met? I've changed my mind. Perhaps you should change it for one that works! Sir, if you covet a child, you should be prepared to play a child's game for her! But now... Uh, now it is too late. And you shall not have my love while I live. Then I shall have her as she dies. Fire. Rain. Ice. Fire. Spears. Shield. Storm. What manner of fool are you to conjure such a magic? An intelligent one. You taunt me. Snake. Music. Wolf. Bear. Rock. Shelter. Gorgon. That was a mistake, Necromancer. But your sergeant at arms makes a lovely statue. So does the Nira Doctor. Now she's dead. I'm changing back into my original form. No, there goes my plan. If I don't do something quickly, you won't be able to burn the golem. Storm! Uh, shelter! Lightning! Conductor! Earthquake! Uh, Hurricane! Chaos! Uh, tranquility! Now, Wyvern, burn her while you still can! <laughs> Why? This game's boring. So I have killed her. I shall kill you myself! This is it. Here he comes. The gate's here! All right, everyone. Stand back. What's this? Some trick of wizardry? No. I know what this is. He's worked it out, Doctor. Oh, you do, do you? Well, that's just where you're wrong. Because it's, uh... uh um, well, uh, what it is, is, uh... It's, uh... Ooh, I say, is that a fly on your shoulder? What? Here, let me... Well done, Doctor! Hmm, that mace did the job splendidly. Let's hope that it's ozone-friendly. Doctor, I am myself once more. I fear that I may no longer be of any assistance to you. No matter, Wyvern. Your job is done. What will you do now? I'm going to follow the necromancer through the gate to make sure the others are all right. Farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, my friend, and thank you.
random gate movement. This looks like 15th century. Doctor, thank heavens you're here. Listen, justice was in mythos. What happened to... Truman, calm down. What's happened? Where are Lyasa and Murgatroyd? We split up to find the gate, but Doctor, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. (sighs) Maybe it'll be easier if you just look. At what? A pile of old sticks and mud? There was plenty of that lying around in 15th century. don't understand. That was Alison. The golem, Alison. It collapsed as soon as we came here. There was a note in it. Justice will be served, it says. Doctor, you killed the wrong girl! Good grief. What have I done? So, Doctor, the game is over. At last. So just Doctor, it's him. He's no threat to us now, Truman. You think not, oh fool. I am invincible. Nothing can destroy me. I think there may just be one thing. And here I am. Look to your rear, Dark Lord of Horror, for your doom approaches. All right, what's all the commotion about? Oh, it's all right. He can't hurt you now, you or anyone. Listen to me, Doctor. Listen, evil is as evil does, but I had a purpose. Don't listen to him, Doctor. He's trying to trick us. Half and full. It's true. Uh, I cannot act against my nature. And that is evil. My purpose, my purpose was, is, to free Mythos from itself. Listen, the gods have bound us in chains of legend to keep Mythos pure. The staff must be periodically used. The sacrifice of the staff bearer made. You're lying. They never told you that, did they? Your peers, your elders. No. They kept it a secret for a long time in order to appease the gods of our world. Yet, why? Should anyone die for them when it is not necessary? Why should anyone die at all? Doctor, I once told the Dragon Queen I should make this whole world her home. Just as it would be for everyone. A true paradise. And so, ah, I researched the secret spell to be used by the staff wielder and developed a way to infuse the staff permanently back into the ground from which it was made. Pass the spell on to you. It's no good. I made a mistake. The staff bearer is dead. Take the spell, Doctor. Do what you will. I could have saved Mythos. Instead, like my life, here is an end. Doctor, the wizard wanted an innocent and a fool. He certainly found his fool. Doctor. Doctor. Doctor, come on, snap out of it. You're... You're right, of course. We... 
I must do something to save Mythos. I fear that might prove harder to accomplish than you think, now that the staff bearer is dead. But is she? I mean, suppose we took all the leaves, I mean, collected all the leaves and took them back to Mythos. It, it, oh, what am I saying? I can't think. How can you not stop groveling upon the earth? My sister is dead. We came to this world of Mythos in the very same moment of the very same day. But she has departed before me. The very same moment of the very same day. Just a minute. Do you mean you and Alison were twins? Aye, that's what I said. <laughs> well, that's it! That's it! Come on, you lot! <laughs> what? Murgatroyd and Alison weren't just brother and sister. They were twins, don't you see? The power to use the Elf Staff was passed down the generations. Twins can be identical in other ways aside from their appearance. Of course. It's genetic! It must be! So theoretically, whatever Alison could do with the staff, Murgatroyd can do as well. No, no, I've told you, the Changeling is always a woman. I don't have the power. It might not matter. You're both from the same genetic pool. Oh, it's worth a try. We're too late to save Alison, but we may just be able to save Mythos. But I thought that science didn't work in Mythos. Science? Magic? What's the difference? They're just different names from the same thing. I understand none of your words, but I do know this. Time is running out for my world. Lyasa's right, of course. Come on! We have to get back to the Necromancer's Fortress before it's too late. It's an earthquake. Watch out for that train! The dissolution of Mythos draws near. We must find the staff. What's your plan, Doctor? Get us into the fortress. I'll explain on the way. Consider it done. Well, let's do what we came to do and get out of here before the whole place falls down, Doctor. You're free to leave, Truman. What? You've got to be joking. Have you seen what it's like out there? I can imagine. The forest is collapsing. The beasts of the earth are fire with panic. The very land and sea... Where do you think the star is in? I have the faintest idea. Everyone, split up and search the castle. It's here. I can feel it. Look at Murgatroyd. He's in some sort of trance. It's as though the staff is calling to him. As if it knows. I am the one. I am the lord of the staff. I found it. Then use it before we're all undone. Plans. Floor splitting up. Pause. Truman, be careful. Truman. It worked, then? So it would appear. It was a good idea of yours. To think Murgatroyd could use the staff, I mean. Yes. Aren't we going to say goodbye to Lyasa and the others? I don't think so. Is something the matter? It's my fault that an innocent child is dead. But if it weren't for you, Mythos could have been destroyed. If it weren't for me, Alison would have saved Mythos of her own accord. Truman, I am racked with guilt. I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't face them, any of them. They have their lives. And their world is intact. If I go back, justice would... Oh, look. You can't live your life constantly in the shadow of some maniac. Oh, can't I? You have to leave, Truman. I can't risk your life as well. I must travel alone from now on. Oh, rubbish! You don't know what you're saying! I'm staying with you, Doctor. Together we can beat him. I know we can. Doctor, I know we can. I hope you're right.
You know, it's a funny thing, but looking back now, I think I rather enjoyed myself on Earth. And in some ways, I miss it. But at the time, well, it was a different story. You may remember, it was about the time we ran into those cuddlesome bear things. We, by the way, implies myself and the doctor. Anyway, we met up with a lady called Sally Milne and her two children. One of them was attacked by a cuddlesome creature, and in an attempt to rescue the little boy, I got rather badly burned. Now, I come from the planet Earth, but some way into the future. Well, my being in 1989 was how I imagined someone from 1989 would feel in the Middle Ages. It was rather primitive. Where I come from, a quick spray of plastibuild and my skin would have healed in about three minutes. On Earth in 1989, it took almost two weeks. Eventually, one of the nurses asked me why I hadn't had any visitors during that time. I often thought the same thing myself. Not only had I not seen sight nor sound of the doctor, a time lord, that is, not medical man, I saw loads of those, but I was also slightly hurt that Sally hadn't visited. After all, it was whilst saving her son that I was injured in the first place. Well, Mr. Crouch, how are we this morning? Everything all right for you? Oh, your little scars are healing quite nicely. I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen any scars heal quite that quickly. And I've seen a few, I can tell you. First, there was that poor Mr. Ryan. Oh, such a nice man. But his arms, oh, they were scalded when his baby tipped boiling water on them. Took him ages to recover. And he never drank tea again. And then there was Mr. Sunjib, a very busy shopkeeper he was. Got a nasty burn from an electric light. Did one of my Nurse Lewis special dressings on that one, I did. Mm. First of all, you put a bit of lint, wrap it up all securely like, yes. and then you add a few drops of germaline um, to soothe it. Nurse and Lewis. Then you... Mr Crouch. When can I get out of here? I need to find the doctor. Oh, Mr Crouch, you are one. We've got lots of doctors here. There's that nice Dr Armstrong and <sighs> sweet old Dr Flynn. Oh, and young Dr Payne. Oh, he's so lovely. Just like Jason Donovan, don't you think? Uh, yes, I expect he is, but I didn't mean that. I meant my oh, you, doctor. You said you weren't registered with a doctor when you arrived here. Well, it's not as simple as that. And anyway, it? you've nowhere to go. You said you were of no fixed abode. A traveller, you said. Besides, the police will need to talk to you. I see. How's my treatment going? Well, you're very lucky. We didn't have to do any skin grafts. Thank God for that. And your skin has healed amazingly quickly. Just a slight red glow. In fact, it looks like you've been to Majorca instead of in an accident. You are lucky. If you say so, Nurse Lewis. So, can I go? Well, I'll have to ask Dr Armstrong. He's in charge. Could you go now, do you think? I I'd like to get going. Oh, he's on holiday today and tomorrow. He's back on Monday. Funny, he's gone to Majorca too. I still don't know what or where Majorca is, but Dr Armstrong did return the following week, declared me fit, so I discharged myself. But Nurse Lewis was right. I was a traveller of no fixed abode. I had no idea where the doctor was, if he was alive even, or how to find the TARDIS. Indeed, all I had were the clothes I arrived in, and they were a little singed. Then I remembered. The shirt wasn't mine. It belonged to someone called Eric, Sally Milne's ex-husband. Hello? Oh, who are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry? Yeah. What? Sorry? What's your name? Eric Mill. Eric? Yeah. Oh, the ex-husband. Uh, I'm a friend of Sally's. I see. Good. Can I come in? No. Look who are you? I told you. Truman Crouch. Uh, I visited Sally with the doctor. Oh, you've come looking for your doctor? That's right. Do you know where he is? In the TARDIS. The what? The TARDIS. His police box. Your doctor lives in a police box? Yes. It's in your cabbage patch. Or it was. Was it? When? Before my accident. Uh, with the teddy bear. 
Oh, I see. You, you've had an accident with a teddy bear and you want to find your doctor in my cabbage patch. Look, uh, just ask Sally. She'll explain. If I or anyone knew where she or the kids were, I would. Do you know where they are? They're not here. No, no one's seen them for weeks. Well, then they must be with the doctor. No, he died. In an accident at work, I think. The doctor's dead? Yeah. Jim Peters. A bit. A bit? Oh, Jim. He's dead? Yeah. So you've not seen Sally or, or my doctor, then? No. Are you sure you've not seen him? No, I was in hospital. I've just got out to date. Look, I'd better be going. If I hear anything, I'll be in touch, OK? Right. Hey, isn't that my shirt you're wearing? I've been looking for that. As I wandered back into the local town, I spotted one other familiar place. A cafe where the doctor and I had sat and had tea once. So I ventured in. Yes, love? Oh, hello. A tea, please. Tea coming up. Thanks. Excuse me. Yes, love? I've just realised I've got no money on me. I'm sorry, I'd better forget the tea. I'll go. All oh, right. Hang on, love. Hmm? You look a bit worse for wear. You all right? I felt better. I'm a little lost right now. I've just come away from the hospital, you Beat see. Beat up bad, eh? Sorry? Well, you look as if you had a fight. Did they steal anything? Well, I didn't really have that much to start off with. Oh, I don't know. Happens a lot round here. Summer months, kids on school holidays. Nothing better to do, so they form gangs. I have a bit of trouble with them now and again in here. But there's only me, really, to fight them off. You look after this place on your own. Well, I have the old bit of help from a couple of schoolgirls in the evenings and weekends, but apart from that, it's just me. My husband died a few years back. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. Not now. We had a few good years together, but he was ill towards the end. We inherited this place from his brother. He went to Australia. I used to be quite good at making tea. Earl Grey, mint, rosehip. The doctor liked his tea. The doctor? The hospital? Oh, no. Yes. Uh, yes, in hospital. Uh, I used to help out in the canteen sometimes, before I was a patient, of course. Oh. Fancy doing a spot here? You mean you'd take me on, just like that? Oh, a good judge of character, me. You look all right. How about we give it a week? All right. I'll do it. Uh, Mrs. Dawes. But just call me Sylvia. That seemed to be it. Sylvia welcomed me into the business. And before too long, I was taking care of the money side of things as well as the customer services. Seems that my university education had been of some use after all. Sylvia and I got on together immediately. She talked a lot about her late husband, Joe. I think they were very much in love. I suppose losing him was hard, but she always maintained it was for the best. I stayed at Sylvia's house, just around the corner from the cafe, in her son's room. He was at university in some backward-sounding place called Dundee. I believe it's famous for its cakes, but not a lot else. It took the police quite some time to track me down about my accident. Well, to be honest, I'd forgotten they wanted to see me. So, Mr Crouch, let's just recap a bit here. You arrived in town around June the 23rd last? If you say so. Uh, no, you said so. I didn't, actually. I said it was June because the doctor told me it was. I don't know what June means. You don't know what it means. Uh, what do you mean? I'm sorry? I'm not sure what you mean by saying you don't know what June means. Well, what does it mean? Uh, June, uh, the month, after May, before July... June. Oh, now I understand. <laughs> old calendar, of course. What about your old calendar? No, your old calendar. I don't use calendars anymore. Times and dates are relative, you see, depending on where you are in space. I mean, we still measure months, weeks and days, but we just have figures. Names are rather quaint. I see. No, uh, where were we? Ah, yes, you arrived on June the 23rd and came into contact with Mrs Sally Milne of 38 Fairchild Crescent. Said Mrs Milne has since disappeared shortly after an accident in her car, which resulted in your hospitalisation. That's right. I was burnt by the exploding teddy bear her son was carrying. I see. That would be, uh, Richard Milne? No, it was Martin. He just pretended he was Richard. 
It was the game they played. I see. Shortly afterwards, you were admitted to St Horace's for treatment at the Burns Unit. You were in for ten days before discharging yourself. We were then contacted by Mr Eric Milne, husband of the missing Mrs Milne, who said someone fitting your description pestered him in his distress. Was that you? I pestered him. Me. He was deliberately obtuse. All I wanted to do was to find the doctor. I see. This would be Dr Armstrong at St Horace's. Who? Oh, him. No, my doctor, he brought me here on June the 23rd. Your doctor? According to the hospital records, you are not registered with a doctor by your own admission. And look, Detective Sergeant Officer Inspector Goosh, I have been through this a thousand times with the hospital and with you. I am not registered with a doctor, but my friend is called the doctor. I see. No, I don't think you do. I have sat here very patiently for two hours now, answering your questions. Rather insular questions at that. I've a job to go back to, with probably a lot of very impatient customers. If you have nothing further to say to me, can I go? Frankly, Mr Crouch, no. I see. And are you uh, charging me? If so, what with? Firebombing Mrs Milne's car? Talking to her ex-husband, perhaps? Trespassing on the Milne's family cabbage patch? Uh, what exactly am I here for? Mr. Crouch, we are investigating the disappearance of Sally Milne and her two sons. You were the last person to see them apparently alive. Strictly speaking, I don't think I was the last to see Richard Milne. Both his brother and his mother saw him before he ran away. Ran away? Richard Milne ran away? When? Just after he was sick down my shirt. The night before the teddy bear exploded. We were trying to find him when the explosion occurred. We'd been told he'd been killed in an accident, but we really didn't think it was him. One of your men was there. A, a sergeant. Sergeant Furlong, that's the name. I don't know of any such officer. Tell me about this incident. We got a call from the police. We went to the factory where those cuddlesome bears were made. Well, the owner said Richard had broken in and had been killed. The only problem with that was that, firstly, they thought it was Martin, who was in fact standing beside me, and secondly... It didn't look like Richard. Sally, once she got over the shock, was convinced there had been a mistake. The bear the owner had given Martin, the, the real Martin, then attacked him and exploded when I tried to get it off him. That's how I got injured. Mm. Well, the incidents of those cuddlesome teddy bears have ended now. The factory was raided and everything taken away and destroyed. Good. Anyway... At the factory, the owner was helped by a policeman called Furlong. He spoke to us. I'm sure he was a sergeant. I see. Had you known the Milne family very long? No, since June the 23rd. And they disappeared on the 25th? If you say so, so it seems did the doctor. What about that man that invented the toys? Ronald Turvey. He too has disappeared. Or maybe there's a link. I don't really doubt it. But none of this helps me know anything else about you. Well, what else do you want? Where are you from? The truth. As we've obviously not had it before, yes. All right. Here goes. My name is Truman Crouch. I was educated at the Stonidema University Taurus 8 department. I then went to work on the planet Nematoda, where I met the doctor and his friend Rhea. <laughs> Well, I decided that my career as colony foreman was not going very far, so I stayed with the Doctor in his TARDIS. That's his time-space machine. We travelled around for a while until I was captured by a race called Daleks. They held me prisoner for a time. I still don't remember too much about that. But I was rescued. I learnt that Rhea had died. The Doctor was injured, and we were being hunted down by something or someone called Justice. Really? And that's with a Y, if you're writing this down. Thank you. Then we got caught up in this cuddlesome business, and here I am. The Doctor has vanished, along with the TARDIS, and I'm stranded here on this backward planet, a few centuries before I'll even be born, trying to exist at Sylvia's Cafe in the High Street. I see. Any questions? And that was it, really. I could be of no further help to the police. I think they thought I was mad. I went back to the cafe to help Sylvia, and over the next few months got accustomed to 20th century Earth and its strange idioms. The police periodically talked to me, mainly to say that no trace of Sally or the kids had ever been found. 
They found the old writer man, though. Turvey. He died in a fire at a complex somewhere in South Africa. There were a lot of bodies, apparently. It was assumed that there had been trouble with some of the local townships there. As none of the victims were actually South African, the government there washed their hands of the affair, and after a while it seemed to be forgotten. Eric Milne sold Sally's house eventually and moved away again. Life for me carried on in a fairly boring way. Lots of cooking and tea-making. But I enjoyed Sylvia's company, and I think she liked having, as she put it, a man about the house. Now one thing I did learn was that in the 1980s, humans still had all sorts of pagan festivals. History books of my era say that such things died out about 150 years before, but I shall take great pleasure in correcting Professor Duval about that when, if, I get home. Anyway... Come the month called October, I think I've got the hang of the old calendar now, everyone was getting ready for something called Halloween. Apparently, children dress up as monsters and knock on people's doors, asking for a trick or treat. They either get some sweets or fruit, or they squirt the householder with a water pistol. Sylvia had extreme doubts about the validity and morality of such actions. But working at the cafe, I'd got to know quite a lot of the local children from the school, and saw that from their point of view it was quite an eagerly awaited event. On the last night of October, Sylvia and I locked up the shop and headed home. On the way, Sylvia suddenly stopped and shivered quite violently. What's wrong, Sylvia? Oh, nothing. Someone's just walked over me grave. What? Oh, it's just another of our quaint expressions, as you'd say. <laughs> I can't really explain what it means. It must be all this ghosties and ghoulies stuff the kids are on about. It's getting to you. Probably, love, probably. <laughs> what do you fancy doing tonight? Well, it's Tuesday, isn't it? So I wouldn't mind seeing EastEnders. I want to see whether Paul and Diane get together. Yeah. Then there's that horror film on Channel 4. Oh, I don't like those. Especially not tonight. What's so different about tonight? Well, it's Halloween. Well, I just don't like horror films. All right, then. An early night would probably do me good anyway. Here we are. Home, sweet home. Hello, Smokey. Yes, I know we're late. Truman, would you feed her, please? OK. Come on, Smokey. Dindins. Look what Uncle Truman's got for you. Hmm, what has he got? Oh, how about rabbit and liver? <coughs> OK, then. Truman. Yeah? I think there's someone upstairs. What about? I'm not sure. I just heard a noise. Stay here. Nothing. Sylvia, there's nothing up here. Sylvia? Sylvia? Ah, there you are. Who on earth are you? Now, that's for me to know and you to find out. Oh, let her go, please. She can't hurt you. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, I don't know. Hmm? No. All right, then. Feed the cat, Sylvia. Thank you. You can see her in the kitchen quite clearly. She won't do anything funny. No? What a shame. Oh, you didn't mean funny ha-ha, did you? What do you want with us? What were you doing upstairs? How did you get down past me? Questions. Always lots of questions. I'm not going to hurt anyone. Huh, you have a funny way of showing that. Was I hurting you, lady? You frightened me. But that's all. For which I apologise. Anyway, it's you I came to see. Me? Why? Because you're different. Because I'm different? In what way? Oh, come on, Truman Crouch. Why do you think... Because you stick out like the proverbial sore thumb on this planet. How do you know my... Do you know this man, Truman? No. Well, I don't think I do. No, you don't. Well, not yet, anyway. Name's Todd. How did you get here? What do you... What have you done? She's not harmed, nor's the pussycat. I've just frozen them in a localised time bubble for a bit. How? Oh, easy to do. Complicated to explain. Just accept I can do it. You're not human. I'm not even humanoid. <laughs> I just adopted this shape so as not to frighten you too much. Psychic emanations around here are on quite a violent scale tonight. Anyone particularly empathic would spot me coming a mile off. Wasn't aware humans were that uptight. It's Halloween, a night of ghosts and ghoulies for them, a sort of jokey ritual. Sick, the lot of them. Don't they realise that there are all kinds of races which feed off the waves they're projecting tonight? Honestly, you only need a strollop of Ganesate to fly past and it'll be onto them in a flash. Literally. She's quite an empath, that one. Explains the cat. Sorry. Your lady there, Sylvia Dawes, she ranks about 0.02 on the scale. 
The cat can sense it. That's why it's so fond of her. Felines all over the universe always stick with the mentally and emotionally advanced ones. Someone's walking over my grave, she said. It was you arriving. Probably. Anyway, to business. It's about your friend. Sylvia? No, the doctor. Been a bit naughty, you see. Been playing with time. But the laws of time... Ah, are... but there's no time laws to stop him. Well, not very many, anyway. Are you a time lord? Me? Good grief, no. I'm far more interesting. I manipulate time. Locally, not universally, of course. A rare breed. And always in demand to those who pay well. And you know the doctor? Yes, unfortunately. That's the problem. So he's still alive. I knew he had to be. Well, he was. Well, is. Will be. It's all relative. Oh, please don't be patronising. Grief living with these parochials has really got to you. You're thinking in their terms. All right, on those terms, yes, the doctor's still alive. I think. You think? Yes, well, that's the problem. I've lost track of him. He asked me to do a favour for him while he was being a bit naughty. What sort of favour? Well, I don't think it's for me to tell you if he hasn't. Let's just say I acted as a courier. Temporal stasis kind of effort. Anyway, he hasn't paid up yet, and my boss has asked me to chase him up before the interest charges get too high. You've seen the doctor? About five months ago, your time. It was all a bit shady, going off to a rehab colony. A what? Oh, never mind, it's not important. What does matter is that I've lost track of him. In fact, I think he's lost track of himself. He said he was coming to get you five months ago. I see he's not here yet. Obviously. Otherwise I wouldn't be stuck here oh, with careful, these... careful. These are your ancestors we're talking about. In fact... No, never mind. Never mind what exactly? Well, I shouldn't tell you this, but... Ever heard of Dundee? Yes. Sylvia's son is there, baking cakes or something. <laughs> baking cakes? Oh, very good. Sorry. Dundee cakes. I like you, Crouch, I really do. Look, I'm really sorry, but I don't understand... Oh, anyway, this guy in Scotland... Uh, Terence, I think. Terence Dawes, yes, that's him. Well, you would like him. Well, I hope you would, anyway. Well, I've spoken to him on the phone, briefly. He seemed pleasant enough. Oh, brilliant. Not only do you live and work with one, you've talked with the other. I love it. Love what? You, Mr Truman Crouch, you are one of the rarest breeds in the cosmos. You have met your ancestors. You mean Sylvia and Terence? Your literal ancestors. On Terence's side, you'll be his great, 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 to the power of six at least, grandson. If you ever doubted there was order to the universe, you've just been given proof. Then I'm proof that they survive. Survive what? Well, anything. Everything. Well, I suppose so. I mean, Terence gets married and has a family which somewhere down the generations produce you. But they don't live forever. No one does. Including our mutual friend, the Doctor. Especially if my boss doesn't get paid pretty sharpish. So, if I ever see him again, I'll ask him to chase you up and pay you. That's the idea. I knew I could count on you to help. Todd, was the Doctor all right when you saw him? Mm. Oh, yes, fine. Good form. Always is the Doctor. One in a million. Hmm. Right. Is that it, then? Yes. I suppose I'd better unfreeze your friends. <laughs> I... well, what happened, Truman? Sorry about that, Sylvia. Truman will explain. Will I? Oh, yes, don't forget to feed the cat. Hmm? Oh, sorry, Smokey, not in your lifetime. They finally get the recipe right in about 2435. I don't know. I suppose you'll have to carry on bird catching. Yeah, you take care as well. Truman, what's he don't doing? Don't even try to think about it, Sylvia. Bye, folks. Sorry for the inconvenience. What on earth was all that about? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Well, I'm going to feed Smokey, and then you can explain just how your friend manages to come and go like that. Funny thing was, after she fed Smokey, Sylvia never mentioned Todd again. It was as if he went clear out of her mind. I suspect Todd had something to do with that. Smokey, on the other hand, I'm sure remembered everything. He obviously knew more about Todd than I expected. Come to think of it, cats on the whole seem to know more about things than the rest of us. Then, as Christmas drew near, I was working in the cafe when I heard a commotion in the street. And experts are saying that this discovery could throw new light on the chain of development from ape to man. Well then, 
It's time to go from African apes to American reindeer as we have a little festive cheer here on Radio 1. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Sylvia, could you wash some more cups up, please, and get some more 50p's? I'm right out. OK, lovey. What's going on? I don't believe it. What is it, Truman? What's that doing there? It's the doctor. I didn't know they were reintroducing police boxes. It's a good place to put it, Sylvia, though. Sylvia, it's the doctor. He's come back for me. Your friend? Oh, Truman, I am pleased. Why has he brought a police box? I must go. I must... <laughs> Uh, Sylvia, what can I say? I- I'm sorry, but I-, I really must go. I knew it would happen one day. I never understood you, where you come from, who the doctor was, but if he's come for you, then I know you must go. Look, I'll get him to wait for me, and I'll come back and say goodbye properly. No, no, Truman, I hate goodbyes. It- it's like when Joe died. I didn't want to say goodbye then. I-, I just left when I knew he would die. I can't stand things like that. Just run off, there's a love. There's so much to say. You must meet the doctor. He'd love to meet... Please, love, just go and see him. All right. Thank you. Thank you for everything. I'll miss you. Give my love to Smokey. I will. Off you go. And thank you for looking after me. Bye, Gran. You what? No, nothing. Bye-bye. And that was that. I never saw Sylvia again. The doctor apologised. The TARDIS had gone wrong as usual and he'd been delayed in picking me up. Doctor? Yes, Mr Crouch? Who's Todd? Todd who? I don't know. He said he'd done a job for you and you hadn't paid the bill. Ah, that Todd. Well, you know, you shouldn't believe everything he told you. He's a bit of a rascal, that one. He paid you a visit, did he? Obviously. Well? Yes, I got his firm to do a job for me. Askren. Well, anyway. Askren. Truman, it doesn't matter. Right, let's go somewhere nice and warm. Florana. Now there's a resort. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. In Truman's Excellent Adventure were Nigel Fares and Nicholas Briggs, with Heather Barker as Nurse Lewis, Richard Tyrrell as Eric Milne, Lynn Clough as Sylvia, Mark Wyman as Inspector Gooch, and Anthony Townsend as Todd. The play was written by Warren Martin, studio managed by John Ainsworth, and directed and produced by Gary Russell. Thank you.